It's 1858, and British Crown rule was just established in India, ending a century of control by the East India Company. The life and death struggle that preceded this formalization of British control lasted nearly two years, and is variously referred to as the Great Rebellion, the Indian Mutiny, or the First War of Indian Independence. The British had taken over India to mobilize its resources for their imperial war effort. And here is the story of the triumph of India's independence from Great Britain and the tragedy of the partition of India. August 1947, the British are quitting India nearly 200 years after they took power. One of the largest and most ethnically diverse nations in the world will now become two, India and Pakistan. Shockingly, there exists no memories or public archive devoted to the partition, even though 14% of the population was affected by the partition. At the beginning, all the rage was at the British. To stop that, the colonizers had an idea, divide and rule. This meant putting Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, and Christians against each other. This put minorities in positions of power over majorities. Their idea was if they are fighting each other, they aren't fighting us. Not that the Indians didn't fight over religion before, but it was the first time that this was a result of a policy. Religion became more important than language and ethnicity, and mistrust between religious communities became the norm. Before India got independence, uh, there was a lot of, um, you know, communal tension and communal rights within India. Um, you know, British, uh, before they left, they put Muslims against Hindus, uh, Muslims against Sikhs. Uh, so there was a division on communal lines. And uh, finally, they said, uh, well, all these individuals, different faiths will not be uh, able to live together. So uh, the predominantly Muslim majority um, area was uh, created as Pakistan and Hindus who were living over there had to migrate to India. It trickled up to Indian politicians like the Muslim League's Muhammad Ali Jinnah who talked about having a separate Muslim state if the British were to ever leave. Muhammad Ali Jinnah who was the father of the nation of Pakistan um, he felt that uh, this subcontinent area uh, will follow democracy but they will follow a majoritarian form of democracy. Uh, and Muslims will always be minority and they will never be, um, you know, they will never become a ruling, cl ruling class. So he fought uh, for, um, for uh, the independence of um, uh, and for the creation of Pakistan and he was able to uh, successfully convince the British and was able to, um, you know, create a separate state which is uh, the current day Pakistan. Then World War I began. The British promised to leave India if Indians fought for them. And they fought. But independence didn't happen. Two decades later, it was World War II. And again, there was a promise of independence in return for troops. But this time, leaders like Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru, who would be India's first prime minister, said no. On the other hand, Jinnah, the Muslim League leader, wanted British support for a new Muslim country, and for that, he convinced Indian Muslims to fight. By the time World War II ended, it was clear that the British were going to leave. Um, first Prime Minister of um, India was Jawaharlal Nehru, whose entire family participated in freedom struggle. He was um, educated and trained in Great Britain. He received a, uh, a degree in law. He was a barrister at law. His father was an exceptionally rich man who basically spent all his money um, devoting it uh, for the uh, freedom struggle. And um, Nehru was extremely, extremely close to Gandhi. So when India became independent, uh, Nehru was the obvious cho choice uh, to be the first Prime Minister of India. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. Many Muslims began to fear living under a Hindu majority in a democratic India. And many Hindus were angry that Muslims wanted to break up the country. That is what caused the chaos. This scared the British and they promised to leave India in 1948, but their exit from India wasn't going to be clean or peaceful. The religious divisions they had stoked had turned into an inferno. 
Jinnah seized this opportunity and demanded a separate Muslim state. Nehru, also scared by the violence, reluctantly agreed. Gandhi opposed it, but it was too late. Jinnah's supporters were in no mood to debate. The British, thinking they had fixed things, announced they were now going to leave in August 1947. That was one year earlier than planned. A man named Cyrus Radcliffe, who was a British lawyer, was brought in to divide the Indian Empire. He was given one job, to draw borders that would break up India, taking into account religion and other things like railways and irrigation canals. He was given 36 days, but finished 3 days earlier, but the lines that created West Pakistan, India and East Pakistan were kept secret until after independence. Radcliffe didn't quite finish his job though. He didn't draw a line for Kashmir. What could go wrong, right? On August 14, Pakistan gained independence and India gained independence the next day. Partition had become a reality. If you think this story has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. Because of Radcliffe's lines, communities that have lived together for centuries turned on each other for one of the most communal massacres of the 20th century. Hindus and Muslims were on the grip of madness and lunacy. In 1947 alone, an estimated 15 million people became homeless, making it the world's largest mass human displacement. Between 1 to 2 million lives were lost, and families have been split apart to this day. The dust from August 1947 has yet to settle. When I talk about the sad chapter, the dark chapter during the partition of India and Pakistan, um, there were at least 15 million people who were internally displaced, who were uprooted, uh, uprooted uh, from their, um, you know, from their homes, from their houses. Uh, so this definitely is a very dark chapter. Uh, around uh, two million people were killed during the partition. Um, because uh, there were so many you know communal tensions that existed between India and Pakistan especially in the northern area um, that uh, caused a lot of violence and bloodshed uh, but um, it took a time for things to get uh, settled down. Since then India and Pakistan have fought three wars over Kashmir and one over East Pakistan which eventually became Bangladesh. To this day they both fight over borders and anything that involves them is politically charged. Over 70 years, the divide between people who look the same, speak the same, dress the same, eat the same food, and make the same music has become even deeper. 